Hi, my name is Stephen Tu, and I am the designer of the game Dubai. Dubai is a fast game of speedy economy, tall towers, and savvy investments for two to six players, and it plays in about 30 minutes. Um, it has lots of intricacies despite a very simple system. Uh, you really have to watch what other players are doing, and that's what makes it fun. Um, let's show you the game. Okay, so in front of us is a game of Dubai ready to play. I'm going to very quickly run through the setup. Firstly, we're going to give each player a player card. The player card outlines what you can do during your turn, your actions. And then we're going to put each player's score tracker on the score track starting at zero. We'll then put the phase marker on phase one. This tells you how far in the game you are. When we reach phase three, the game ends. Or if the deck runs out, the, the game ends. And then we're going to take all the event cards, there are nine, and we're going to shuffle them face down and then we're going to place them all face up on the coming up pile. The top card is public knowledge. Then we're going to set up the goals, we just take any three random goals and place them in the allotted space. Then we're going to set up the company values. The starting values are marked with a dot each and you can see they're all in the same row. We then take the company deck, shuffle everything, which I've already done, and then deal out five to the market face up. And then every player gets four cards from the top of the company deck, and we lay out one foundation card, phase one, and we're ready to go. So I'm going to quickly run through the four actions that a player can take during their turn. When you take a build action, you take a, any number of cards of the same color from your hand and you lay them, lay them down onto a tower, either an empty foundation or on top of an existing tower. Each tower can have up to three colors in it before it is considered complete and thus open for business. So whenever I build, let's say I've built two greens here, you gain points equal to the number of cards times the value of that company at the time. So two cards times three points will get me three, uh, six. And thus I'm on six points. After the build, the company that you've built drops value by one. Okay, let's talk about take. Take is the second action that you can do. And uh, it involves taking up to two cards from the market. That means any of these cards or the face down top card of the company deck. So I'm going to take, let's say two more greens. After a take action, you replenish the market from the company deck. So if I have four cards and I want to do the take action, I can only take one because you take up to two cards. So in this instance, if I still want to take, it's, it's a first turn, I'm going to take just one card and it gets replenished from the market. Okay, let's talk about invest. When you invest, you take any number of cards of the same color from hand. Let's say we're investing three blues and you place it in front of yourself like this. And what that does is it would raise the value of that color up by as many cards as you put down. So in this case, blue goes up by three. And when you invest, it enables you to vie for the dividends of a tower at the end of a turn. When a tower has three colors in it, it is considered complete and open for business. You put a now open card on top. And if it is the last tower of a phase, um, phase one only has one tower, then the phase ends. We move into scoring and clearing. When we score and clear, investments gets calculated. This tower has three blues, one black, two greens. That means blue is the majority um, owner of the tower. Whoever has the most shares in blue, um, this player, me, I have three in blue. No one else has blue, let's say for argument's sake. They will take the tower, all the cards, and place them face down in a separate pile that will score them points, one each, at the end of the game. So when the phase is over, we move. when all the towers have been cleared, we move on to the next phase, phase two, 
in which case we introduce a second tile. Now another thing to note is that on the card it says, on the now open card it says, trigger the top coming up card. Whenever a tower is finished, this card, the top card from the events deck, coming up deck, um, triggers. This one says, simultaneously each player gives one of their investments to the player to their right. After this is done, so let's say I'm going to take this investment and give it to the player to my right. And after that's done, the event card is discarded into the discard pile. And a new event card is, is on top of the coming up pile. In this way, every player can see what is coming up, but um, the timing of it triggering is largely dependent on the player playing. Okay, so that's the invest um, action. The rest is take and trade. When you take, you take up to two cards from the market or the face-up market or the deck, the top card of the deck, after which you replenish, replenish the market from the top of the deck if there are holes. So if I take and take action, I take these two cards and I replenish them from the deck like so. The last action, the trade action, allows you to trade cards from your hand or your investments into the market. So let's say my hand looks like this. It's already five cards and I wanted to take these three red cards. I could do that by either taking all three of these cards, trading them into the market, taking these three cards, picking these three cards up, these now into the market, or I could trade also from my, my investments, in which case I would trade, uh, if you do trade from your investments, you still can't exceed your maximum hand size of 5. So it, in this case, I can't trade from my investments because whatever I pick up would go up, uh, would exceed my hand limit of 5. So let's say I had a hand like this, 3 cards, in which case I can then trade 2 of these cards plus this one card for 3 cards from the market. Okay, so as an example, I'm going to show you how an end of a game would look like. Um, tiles 1 and 3 are already complete. They both have three colors and are capped by now open uh, cards. I'm going to go ahead and finish the game off by playing two white cards, um, one of which is a wild card. Wild cards can be built, they can never be invested, and that's about it. Um, but they must be built with other colors. Uh, they can be built by themselves. So I'm going to play that onto it, making it three colors, black, orange, white. That would get me two times seven points, uh, 47, whatever that is. And we're going to cap this off, this building off, with the now open card, which prompts the triggering of a event. So we're going to process that event. Starting from current player, each player takes two, one face-up card from the market without going over five cards. Um, so however that happens, etc. Then we're going to move into the third score and clear. Okay. So starting with the first tower, there are three reds, three blues, one green. Who, the blue and red are tied. Um, however, the tie-breaking works as such. Um, whichever color is highest in the tower wins the tie. So blue wins the tie. I have three blues. So I take this. I have the most blues out of everyone. I could have had one. If no one else had a blue, I still would have won that. Each of these cards are worth one point. Okay, the second tower is one white, two orange, two blacks. The Wild card does not count towards any color for the purposes of dividends. So in this case, my opponent has three oranges. I have none. Uh, my opponent wins this entire tower for points. In the third case, uh, two blacks, one orange, one green. 
black wins because it has majority of two over the other colors of one. My opponent has two black, I have one, so my opponent will take these four points. After the final scoring and clearing phase is over, we move on to goals and we see whoever has the most colors, most cards of a single color in hand, whoever has the most cards in hand, and whoever has the fewest investments, they get awarded these points. We move them along the track as many as it's, it, they have. Um, if there's a draw, a tie for any of these things, you uh, split the points, round it down. And once those points are processed and everyone has moved their score on the score track, whoever is the leader wins the game. Voila. And that is how you play Dubai. So thank you very much for checking out my video on the game I designed Dubai. The print and play is available via the link down below. Please check it out if you have any time. Um, I would appreciate any input feedback at all. Thank you so much for watching again. And uh, I hope I'll see you around in this video or others. I'm skilling up. So practice makes perfect. Um, cheers. Bye-bye.